Now we're going to talk about the potential between two different points. This is different from the energy that was stored in the same way that uh, Coulomb's law relates to, or the force relates to electric field. Now let, me, let me clarify a little bit more. So force is the, is the total amount what's experienced between two charges. And what you do is if you say, well, let's just make one of the, if, if one charge is the situation and I just wanna know what force any kind of charge would experience, what I do is I divide out the, the observer charge and I come up with the E field, which is, what, which is the amount of force that a unit charge would experience. So in Coulomb's law, I had Q1, Q2, if Q1 was what was there, and I, Q2 is my observer, I just want to know what force any kind of charge would experience, one thing I can do is just make this a unit charge, right? Set Q2 equal to 1, or divide out the Q2, it's the same thing. But the electric field is, in some way, the force experience for a unit charge. Though the, the potential that we're going to talk about here is the same thing. So we previously had talked, oh, very important, it is not a vector. The Previously we had talked about the, the energy stored, right? If you're moving a charge against an electric field. So if you're given an electric field and you want to know, you know how much energy is stored per unit charge, I just set that charge equal to one or divide out the charge and then that gives me V. So this potential that we're talking about. So it's analogous to what we were talking about before in terms of potential of energy stored or work performed uh, in the same way that force and electric field are related. So let's, with through that lens, we can then hazard a guess and say that the potential is going to be equal to the W that we were discussing before, the energy stored when moving a charge against electric field, but we're gonna divide out the charge, right? Or set Q equal to one, it's the same thing. If we plug that into, if we plug this into the equation that we saw previously, you get minus Q integral of, uh, note that in, in this case, let's say uh, one thing to keep in consistent with the textbook, let's say we move from B, so note this is a little counterintuitive, to A. So we're going to move from B to A. Uh, the, the reason for that, I'll, I'll just try to explain it here, is they, they want to just make it a function of A, and usually B is our reference point, so uh, that, that's why we, they, they set uh, the reference point or the starting point to, our, um, to a throwaway variable, so that's, that's why they kind of defined it this way in my view. But integral from B to A of E dot DL, and the Q's cancel out, so you come up with the expression that V equals minus, I'll just say, start to be abundantly clear, end of E dot DL. So it's the same thing, we just don't have to worry about what Q is anymore. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that usually you would have a reference point. In many cases, when we're doing our circuit analysis, we, see we, we usually have a ground, right? We have a point that we call zero potential which we kind of use as our reference point. So one thing that I'd like to point out is that you can define your potential, you know, when, when we take out our voltmeter and say, you know, this, this point is at five volts, it's five volts relative to ground, right? So if you have VA is equal to, you, you can say the, the potential at location A would be if you if you started with a charge from the reference point and you moved it to point A, that's the total amount of energy stored at that location, and that and you can find that using this integral. Similarly, if you were at point B, the integral is going to be ref uh, from the reference point to B of E dot dl. And therefore, if you wanted to find the potential difference between VA and VB, which we'll just call VAB, that would be the line integral from B to A, E dot DL. And we can also break that out into two integrals. Right? That's going to be from the reference point 
to a of e dot dl to the reference point to b e dot dl, which is going to be the potential of a minus the potential of b. So a, a graphical way to say that is if this is my if this is c level, and I'm looking at the potential energy at point A, this say this is 100 meters, and point B, this is 2,000 meters, then you then this, this is your VAB, is going to, you can view this as the difference between these two. Or you can also view it as uh, from sea level to 100, so that gives, that's, gives you the energy here, and then sea level to 2,000, if you take the difference between them, uh, you will also get the same result. So if you have a function that gives you the potential at all the locations and you want to find the potential difference between lo two locations, you can also just take, go from VA and VB and compare those two directly. You don't necessarily have to go back to the reference for everything. One final thing to point out is that later on you'll be calculating, you'll be using E and V to, you'll be either using E to find V or vice versa. In the case of finding v, you would often need to take e dot dl and do this integral. And when you take this integral, you're going to have a constant, right? So how do we define the constant? Quite often, you would use, so you would, when you do this, when you do this, you would integrate symbolically, symbolically, and then use the boundary conditions. So for example, uh, this is, you're going you're gonna to be given like V of this location is going to be equal to V1. You would use that to solve for C. So that's something to keep in mind in the future. You're going to be, you're going to be using either V to find E or E to find V. And in the case where you're, you have E and you're trying to find V and you're taking the integral, uh, you might and you're given some boundary conditions, the way to do that is to first integrate this symbolically, and then you use the boundary conditions you're given to kind of anchor it down and set, that basically sets what C level is so that you can come up with, so that you can come up with a, a fully formed function that doesn't have any, any remaining undefined variables in it.